This video is sponsored by Project Darkwater's new post-apocalyptic fantasy campaign setting for D&D 5e, Veil of Ruin. I love the setting for this. I've always wanted to run my players through a jungle full of terrifying plant monsters and gigantic snakes. And now, I can, because the module comes with an awesome 5th level adventure. I'm going to spring for the miniature package, because honestly, these are some of the best minis I've seen. The snake with human arms is going to haunt my dreams. Perfect! Check out the Kickstarter in the link below, it's worth your time. Now, what you're here for? Necromancer performs a surgery with a flamethrower. Kinda. Hi everyone, All Things D&D is back with another story. A necromancer is just a really late healer. But this necromancer happens to also be a just-in-time surgeon. We love to hear your funny problem-solving stories after you listen to how this necromancer saves the day. I am playing Jetor, a level 5 deep gnome necromancer in 5e. We're nearing the end of the Dragon Heist adventure and have just found the MacGuffin. The party is working for as many factions at once as possible without telling any of them about it if possible. We gotta raise the money to renovate our haunted mansion. Gonna have a ghost bartender, gonna be sweet. Normal 5th level crap. Party is Jetor, big fighter, small paladin, an emerald conclave ranger and occasionally the archetype steal everything rogue who was away doing some crime things in crime time. In the last session we cleared out another necromancer's hideout in the city, underneath a wig shop. A zombie holder appeared mid-fight and nearly disintegrated the paladin. Fortunately, he missed and got destroyed by a hasted paladin with two smites. Haste is a good spell. We head back to Waterdeep and meet with the Emerald Conclave, who had tasked us to take care of this necromancer's creations earlier. We realize that Waterdeep's residents are a bunch of hippies, especially the Emerald Conclave. They hate necromancy and barely tolerate Jetor. Necromancers get a bad rep, to be honest. The Emerald Conclave rewards us, but tasks us to go back there in order to clean out something we left behind in the hideout. You see, a goon that was after the necromancer ran away from the party in a rare moment of justified self-perseverance. He ran through a door into a room filled with zombies. We later closed the door and left. Detect Magic sees a ton of zombies, and one being that is made with stronger magic than the rest. We plan to just leave it there, as the zombies weren't going anywhere. But the money. Plus, they're willing to send a cleric with us who can destroy undead. Seems easy, right? We return to the wig shop ASAP with the cleric and go to the door of the zombie room. Everyone prepares to charge in. Jetor hastes the warrior. Haste is a good spell. The fighter rushes in, sees the stronger undead and charges it. The rest of us start mopping up the trash zombies. The cleric does cleric crap, and magic nukes ten of them to dust. Very cool. But the stronger undead is weird. It's filled with worms and is throwing them at the fighter. The fighter dodges most of them, and when one lands on him, he cuts it off right away. The strong zombie gets floored by the hasted fighter and seems dead, but the worms are still crawling around. We turn to the rest of the zombies, clean up the trash mobs no problem over the next round. Back to the worm undead's turn. Surprise! It regenerates hit points. It gets up and lobs a fat worm at the paladin's face. He gets hit, fails to get rid of the worm, and it burrows into him. The paladin smites the worm undead. It dies for real, due to radiant damage. Then he takes damage at the end of the turn from the worm. Combat over, but still in initiative order now. None of us have any idea how to get rid of this thing. The paladin tries to dig it out with his fingers and rolls a two. This makes the wound worse and takes damage. The worm is still deep in there. Someone tries to cure wounds, helps with the bleeding, but the worm keeps doing its thing. On my turn, Jator, not knowing any healing spells, huh, wizard, searches through the necromancer's tome on a nearby table to see if there's anything about the worm undead. Apparently, the worm undead is created as a mimicry of some more powerful undead that serve Orcus himself. While the worm can take damage, once it's burrowed, it's almost impossible to remove it physically without cutting the victim open completely. The only guaranteed method is to use Remove Curse, or an effect that cures disease. But we have a cleric, and he is out of spell slots. Crap. Wait, Lay on Hands cures diseases. The paladin says he's out of Lay on Hands. Of course. The NPC cleric tries, at paladin's discretion, to cut it out. A very hard check, but he rolls very high. He cuts into the paladin's stomach, causing gross damage, but exposing the worm for a brief second. But we are still in initiative order, and it is Jator's turn again. 
Given that the others could earlier attack the worms before they burrowed into them, I ask if I can blast the worm with chilled touch before it hides itself again. DM says yes, but it has three-fourths cover due to being mostly inside of the paladin. And if I miss, then I hit the paladin instead. Doesn't seem very good to me. Any attack roll spell will be really hard to hit in this scenario. But wait, if I use AoE damage, I can't miss, right? Jator walks up to the dying paladin, tells him to prepare himself, and casts Burning Hands point blank right at his torso. Because of the 15-foot cone AoE, I also accidentally hit the ranger behind him. No way to get around it. Roll for damage, get high roll. Paladin barely stays conscious. Ranger gets mildly singed. But the worm is burned to cinder, and the wound is partially cauterized. Score 1 for Necromancer MD. Leave initiative order, and the party breathes a sigh of relief. We start searching the room, bid the cleric goodbye, more healing, regular after-fight business. We leave the hideout triumphant, if mildly charred. Then, the paladin pipes up for a second. Guys, you're gonna hate me for this, but I just realized I did have one more lay on hands left. One more quick word about our sponsor. I can't help but get Diablo 2 Act 3 vibes from the campaign setting, which isn't something I knew I wanted, until now. Enough about nostalgia, check out the cool new monsters, classes, subclasses, and new magic items. Stretch goals will unlock a myriad of items, such as adding additional miniatures to the miniature package at no additional cost to the buyer. Check out the Kickstarter in the link below and explore the deadly jungles of Orman. At least the Paladin has that lay on hands ready for after the party beats him. But that was some pretty quick thinking by the Necromancer. Please let us know what you think and comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel All Things D&D. &D. Our next video will be posted in 3 days, so stay tuned for more amazing Dungeons & Dragons content.